Good evening and welcome to the Joint Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioner meetings of February 1st, 2022. I'm Rob Thomas, the Planning and Zoning Vice Chairman. I'm standing in for the Chairman Briggs Simmons. Prior to this meeting, an invitation was sent to all board members and commissioners, staff, interested parties and applicants participating in the meeting. All participants should be on mute at the start of the meeting and will need to manually unmute their microphones or telephones or devices to speak. Please remember to place yourself back on mute once you finish speaking to minimize background noise in the meeting. I will now turn it over to Madam Chair, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones to introduce and confirm the presence of the commissioners. Thank you so much. Uh... Chairman tonight uh, for the Planning and Engineering Board, Rob Thomas, thank you. Um, certainly I would like to confirm our presence, um, the presence of the Board of Commissioners of Charlotte District One, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. He's not, he has not joined us yet. District Two and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Present. District Three, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District Four, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Present. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, present. I'll start again with District One Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Are you here? Present. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, we do have a quorum board of commissioners, and I'll yield back to you, uh, Chairman Thomas. Great. Also present, uh, present here have members of the Planning and Zoning Board. And as I call your name, please confirm your presence. Uh, Teresa Knowles. Present. Ori Curry, Ori Curry, Brandon Penniman, present, Frank Payne, present, Kirk Nichols, present, Nichols, sorry, sorry. sorry, present, uh, Ori Curry again. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a quorum. Ron Roberts, our planning and zoning manager, will now introduce the county staff and planning and zoning staff that are present. Thank you, Chairman. We have the county attorney, Michael Coleman, on the line. We have deputy county administrator, Fred Perry, myself, development service director and planning, James Worthington, transportation director, Miguel Valentin, zoning administrator, Phil Schaefer, Senior Planner, Allison Duncan. The Clerk of the Planning and Zoning Board, Johanna Womack. All right, great. Um, as a reminder, there's a revisionary clause that applies to each rezoning, and that is the applicant, the agent, or property owner has 24 months to vest the zoning changes after the Board of Commissions has granted an approval. Uh, tonight's procedure, the Planning and Zoning uh, Board conducts each public hearing. Mr. Roberts will announce each application, followed by Planning and Zoning staff who will present each application in full. Then either the applicant or representative have 15 minutes to present their request. Member of the public in favor of the application will be able to present their information. They each will have three minutes with a total of 30 minutes to speak on behalf of the application. Additionally, members of the public in opposition to the application will be able to present their information as well. They also have three minutes per person, a total of 30 minutes to speak in opposition of the application. Um, after the, opposition, after the uh, opposition completes their inputs, what 30 minutes has elapsed, the public hearing will be officially closed. At this point, the staff will, will clarify any points of the zoning case. If the staff is unable to satisfy the board's question, questions, the board will then ask the applicants to a point of clarity. There was no time for the application to uh, represent their case. In other words, when we ask for specific questions, it's not time for the applicant to represent his case, but just more specifically answer the questions that the board members may have. 
Um, our first agenda tonight will be the approval of the minutes of January 4th, 2022, regular joint planning and zoning and BOC meeting. Planning and zoning boards, after reviewing the minutes, do any planning and zoning member have any comments, changes, or questions for either of these minutes? Okay, I don't hear any. So do I, from the planning and zoning board, do we have a motion? This is Frank Payne and I make a motion to approve the minutes for January the 4th, 2022. Great, do I have a second? Second. Who's that? Brandon Pitt. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna call on to each member to uh, their name and to give an answer with yay or nay in response to the vote. Uh, Teresa Knowles. Yay. Kirk Nicholson. Yay. Frank Payne. Yay. And Brandon Penniman. Yes. All right, we have a unanimous uh, vice chair, yay, as well. Uh, we have unanimous, and we're gonna turn over to Madam Chair for approval of the Board of Commissioners for the minutes of January 4th meeting. Thank you so much, Chairman Thomas. Board of Commissioners, you've had an opportunity to review the uh, Joint Planning and Zoning minute uh, meeting minutes from January 4th, uh, 2022. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a, have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your districts, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. District three. Yes. Okay. <laughs> District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a five or unanimous vote in the motion carry. I yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the first agenda item? Absolutely. Z2022-07, Z Don Dammy LLC. It's a request for rezoning from CG to CH, heavy commercial for used car lot at 2086 Fairburn Road. It's land lot 910 District. 18, section two, parcel one, 11. The lot size is 0.45 acres. The application is uh, Demilio Adioli. I'm sorry if I messed up your name. This is the uh, Allison uh, Duncan's case. All right, in regards to the existing conditions, property is located on the north side of Highway 92 near the intersection with Sunset Drive. Uh, this property was originally a rezoned perm residential to commercial use in 1984. Uh, at that time, it was proposed to be used as an insurance office. It is part of a series of sort of residential to retail conversion spaces there in that location. Um, it has had several uses over time. Uh, the applicant is requesting a zoning change uh, to heavy commercial in order to operate as a used car lot. Um, the applicant was aware at the time that they moved into the property that they would be allowed to use the property as an auto broker, which is an office only use. There was an error in the issuance of the business license, um, where even though the planning and zoning approval was for the auto broker only, uh, the business license did say used car lot. Uh, so staff does recognize um, that the applicant did acquire inventory uh, to be placed on the property that would not be allowed uh, as an auto broker. So we uh, had suggested that they pursue uh, the zoning application to see if the Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners would be amenable to changing the zoning to a heavy commercial to allow for the used car lot. Um, in the event that the zoning remains as a general commercial zoning, uh, planning staff has recommended that uh, a suitable amount of time, uh, uh, we had suggested four months, be allowed for the applicant to remove the cars from the used car lot uh, and only be allowed to use the property uh, as an auto broker. Um, here is the zoning on the property. You can see it's currently zoned general commercial. And here is an aerial view. The property uh, is highlighted in red. 
you can see these are the uh, properties that I had referred to that is currently along Highway 92. These were at one time a series of residential homes that have been converted uh, for non-residential uses. Several other properties uh, located in that area have been brought into compliance with the current codes, including parking standards, landscaping standards, uh, and upgrading of the environmental health requirements. Here is a view uh, of the property from the street. Here is a view looking uh, south on Fairburn Road. You can see the landscaping on the other properties and the improvement to the parking on Fairburn Road. And here is a view looking towards I-20 on Fairburn Road. Uh, staff did analyze the zoning criteria. Um, we were neutral on many points of the zoning criteria. We do believe that the existing general commercial zoning uh, is both viable and appropriate um, for the, uh, for the, the property. Um, but we do also recognize that there is benefit to the public to having the zoning change potentially and having the property be brought up to compliance with our current codes and requirements. Uh, so again, if, if the uh, Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners are not inclined to approve the zoning change, we do believe that the current general commercial zoning is viable and appropriate. However, if the Planning and Zoning Board are inclined to approve the request, uh, we recommend approval um, with the following findings. Uh, first, that the rezoning is consistent with the Douglas County Comprehensive Plan and the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. Uh, second, a negative impact to surrounding properties will not result from the rezoning. Uh, and third, the granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare and represents best planning practices. Um, but that recommendation uh, to a heavy commercial with conditions is only based on the following conditions um, being put in place on the property. Number one, the property will be required to immediately connect to the public sanitary sewer system prior to the issuance or renewal of an occupational tax license on the property. Number two, all parking areas on the property must be asphalt or concrete. The property will be required to meet any additional provisions of Article 6 parking and loading requirements of the Douglas County Unified Development Code, including review and approval by the Development Review Committee prior to the issuance or renewal of an occupational tax license on the property. Number three, the property will be brought into compliance with the requirements of the highway corridor overlay prior to the issuance or renewal of an occupational tax license on the property. Number four, the property will be required to meet all provisions of Article 8, landscaping buffers and tree conservation, the Douglas County Unified Development Code in regard to buffers or setbacks between commercial and residential land uses, including review and approval by the Development Review Committee prior to the issuance or renewal of an occupational tax license on the property. And number five, the hey, applicant awesome. must present- Thompson, I'm online. Oh. I can see well, please, on, please mute order yourself, order. Mr. Thompson. Uh, and number five, the applicant must present their plans for compliance with these conditions and any other applicable portions of the Unified Development Code to the Douglas County Development Review Committee. Uh, DRC shall have discretion to direct staff to schedule the zoning action to be returned to the Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners to consider rezoning of the property at the next regularly scheduled zoning hearing if the property fails to be brought into compliance with the required conditions or other applicable codes and regulations. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you, Allison. Will the applicant or the representative please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, and present any information you would like for the Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Commissioners to hear. You have a total of 15 minutes. Calling for the applicant. Can you verify that they uh, logged on? I do see the no. applicant online. I do see that uh, the line is muted. I have asked the applicant to unmute. Thank uh, you. I, I concur. He's online, but he, he's, he's muted for whatever reason. Oh, are you online? Mm -hmm. 
I think he's unmuted. I think we can hear you now. What's the applicant's name? Uh, Mr. Adioti, are you there? I think you were just unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? There you yes. are. Yeah, how are you? you? I'm yes, fine. We hear you. All right. Yeah, um, this is Damilola Adioti, and I'm with my partner here, Kinsley. So we are the two uh, auto brokers presently in this lot. So it will be the one that will, that will be talking right now. Sure. Well, thank you for, for coming. Um, we'd like to know any information that you would like to present to the planning zoning board and, or the board of commissioners pertaining to approval of, the, of your application. Yeah, um, hello, good evening. My name is King as you rightly said. Roygate, my business name is Roygate. We are both brokers. Um, as regards to our application, we, the best of my knowledge, I know we applied and um, we are hoping to get approved. But um, I still will, I would like, I will appreciate more if you please could tell me what more information you need so I could know where to come in from. Sure. As for starters, we need to get your address as well, for the record. Okay, our address is um, 2086 Carbon Road, Douglasville, Georgia. And the zip code is 303135. All right, thank you. Thank so you, any you. information that you'd like to present in, in favor of your application, uh, if you don't have any, that's fine. We do have your application. And, and uh, first of all, were you are you able to see the conditions that are represented on the on the screen right now? What? Oh yes, I am looking at. He actually just um, I just got information right now because I'm not not been in the office. That's um, Dami Lala. Um, he has been the one on the forefront um, presenting this, handling this. I was going to go through them before he stepped in and had me be on the meeting. Um, that's it for now. That's the best I can I have now. But I'm, hold on, let me give him back. Okay, let me just come in from here. Oh, uh, I think I met Mrs. Uh, uh, Allison twice concerning this case. I've gone through the. Uh, the condition, the terms and condition, you know, that they say the county want us to do. And I think I, we can we can be able to do it. I, I We try to talk to our landlady because we are not the rightful owner of the property. So we will see what we can do. We are working on those conditions with the best of our, you know. So that's what I can, we can say for now. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I'm now gonna open to the uh, public hearing. Uh, anyone in favor of this application, uh, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record to make any comments you would like, and you have three minutes each with a total of 30 minutes allocated. Anyone in favor of this application? All right, hearing none. Anyone in opposition of this application? We also ask to unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments that you would like. You have three minutes each with a total of 30 minutes allotted. Yes, this is Mickey Thompson. The address is 2090 Fairland Road, Douglas, Georgia, 30135. Uh, I would like to begin my comments by reading a paragraph from your staff report, it says, based on the adjacent zoning and the overall use along this corridor, staff believes that the existing CG zoning is a viable and appropriate zoning classification for the property. Therefore, denial of the rezoning 
request is justified based on an analysis of the criteria. Now, unlike the adjoining businesses to this property, as the operator said, Carlotta operator, he does not own the property. The property is owned by an absentee owner that pays little to no attention to the activities on the property. This car lot opened approximately 18 months ago. And from the very beginning, they were not operating under the correct zoning. And they knew that. They were bringing in wrecked cars, repairing them in the backyard. Finally, the Douglas County Code Enforcement Officer was able to stop them. Although today they continue to work on these cars mechanically. There are four properties that join uh, this property up for rezoning. I own two of them. One's the insurance company and a single family home. There are two other properties, an all state insurance company and another single family dwelling. Two of these companies listed are major contributors to the Douglas County budget. The little known fact is the amount of revenue insurance uh, companies add to the Douglas County tax base. Under Georgia's tax code, Chapter 8, Title 33, each insurance company pays. 1% on all life policies and 2.5% on all others. During the last year, Douglas County received a check on October the 15th, 2001 for $7,374,871. The partial up for rezoning is 0.45 acres. That's smaller than most single family homes. The partial does not meet the requirements for rezoning. And that's one of the big problems. These gentlemen load and unload their cars out on Highway 92. They use it for a loading ramp. In the last 30 days, there was a situation where they were trying to either load or unload a car. In the rain, it was dark, visibility low. They had the entire northbound Highway 92 blocked. That is dangerous. I am asking you to deny this rezoning request. But if you do, I ask that you please follow staff recommendations. In my written report, I talk about customers wanting safety and I can tell you that they do and the attention of the uh, sheriff's report on page three is important. He said, if approved, and I quote, thefts will increase. Let me tell you that has already happened. After this car lot opened, an individual was trying to rob another car lot on Highway 92. He ran when the police showed up or the sheriff showed up. He ended up on the backside of this car lot that's up for rezoning and was killed by the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. This is the first instance of this type of crime in the 30 years that we've been on this corner. Hopefully this is not a sign of things to come if you rezone this property. Thank you very much for listening to my comments. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Is there anyone else in opposition to his application? Please unmute your system. You have three minutes. Hearing none, I'm going, going to close a public hearing. Uh, any questions from the Planning and Zoning Board? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is Teresa Knowles. Yes, Ms. Knowles. I have a question for uh, the staff. So Allison or Rob, Ron or anyone, uh, the uh, highway corridor overlay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, will, will that be required regardless of the rezoning? So, so typically we, we capture uh, properties under the overlay when the zoning changes, um, right? So property can continue to be used as it has been used until such a time as they propose a substantial change um, in the use. Uh, so this property was rezoned to general commercial back in 1984. We do think that the change in the heavy commercial would warrant um, a, a significant change to the property. Um, I would say if somebody wanted to come in under the general commercial and tear down the existing building um, and build new, that would also be a significant enough change in the existing um, commercial zoning to warrant compliance with the corridor 
Um, but until they actually uh, submit for a use that would require some sort of substantive change to the zoning or something that would require a building permit, they can continue to operate as they are currently situated. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the Planning and Zoning Board? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is Frank Payne. Um, now, I understand that you have, uh, uh, this is for the, uh, the individual's uh, owner uh, at the lot, for the lot. I understand you have cars parked there uh, presently. Are you selling cars now? Mr. This is for Mr. Del, Del Lola. Mr. Adiodi. Oh. Sorry for the pronouncing. <laughs> pronunciation. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, sometimes our names are hard to pronounce. Right. Yes, um, yes sir. And Mr. Chairman, yeah, um, your question, we have the cars for sale. And um, if you all permit us to say, we never use this place as um, a mechanic shop. We have never used here as um we have never and I still stay we still state that used here as a red cars. We only take our inventories and sell sell the cars and do our paperwork immediately. So we I just wish to address that. Uh, we've been actually looking for an opportunity to address that. We have never used here as a mechanic and we, we don't even have any intention to do that, or we're just here to co peacefully coexist and go with the rules and regulation guiding Douglas County and guiding um, um, the state. So right, how, many, you, how many cars do you have presently on the lot? Sir? The lot, I think we'll have, we have, we'll have, um, we'll have 10 on the front lot. Okay, now you operate as a broker and you also sell, them, sell the cars, right? Yeah, we are licensed as a broker, auto, auto use cars. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the Planning and Zoning Board? All right, hearing none. Um, now we're going to move uh, over to the Madam Chair, yield the floor for any questions from the Board of Commissioners. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, General Robert. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant tonight? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, we have Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to start with staff first and then I'll go to the applicant. Um, so this is currently uh, the specific. Um, Allison on the, on the zoning that currently is and where it's going. And then what happened again, it got, um, they were approved for this and they didn't, and if they were allowed to do that, just re refresh my memory real quick. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Robinson. Um, the current zoning is general commercial. Uh, and yep. so far as automotive uses go, an auto broker is allowed, but that is an office only use. You are not allowed to have inventory uh, and sell inventory on the property in a general commercial. Um, the uh, planning and zoning staff signs off on the zoning use for every business license issued in Douglas County. The planning and zoning use that was signed off on was the auto broker, which is appropriate in the general commercial. Um, there was an administrative error in actually issuing the business license. So the business license that was issued in January of 2021 specified used car lot. Um, I, I believe you can clarify this with the applicant, but I believe that's where the misunderstanding came in, where they felt that they were allowed to have inventory on the property. Uh, code enforcement had looked into the issue um, and they had worked with the applicants to try to remove uh, the inventory on the property uh, and work with other code violations they found on the property. Uh, eventually this issue came back to planning and zoning where we had discovered the administrative error. The business license was corrected in November of 2021. So now their current business license is for the auto broker office only. Um, but in acknowledgement of the administrative error, we said they had a path forward. They could either remove the cars and operate under their current zoning, or they could uh, file for a zoning change and see if it was the will of the Board of Commissioners to change their zoning to a heavy commercial, which would allow them to operate uh, as a used 
car dealership as they had been operating. Got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I, I got it. Um, and I'm clear and I'm glad there was ownership um, on the administration for the error. Um, yes, sir. But let, let's go back to the intent of the zoning. Um, going back to 08, now when I came in and the, does this fall under the LCI overlay or not? It doesn't quite touch that. Yes, sir. This property is currently in the overlay corridor. Uh, and if the zoning is to change, they would be captured in the overlay corridor and asked to make the same improvements that the adjacent properties have made when they have changed uh, the use on the property. Got it. Um, you know, when I think about that area, um, yeah, and duly noted to the citizen to brought forth the statistics, man after my own heart, appreciate you. Thank you, duly noted. Um, the, the area, you know, Fairburn Road is is, is, is is a vision for my 20 all the way down. And I'm, I'm just, I'm struggling with how this would fit. I'm going to heavy commercial right there in that area. Um, and I get the mixed use, I mean, I get the office, I mean, and um, it's just, uh, I just, I'm, I'm not comfortable right now at this point. I'm willing to listen to my peers, but just, it changes the spirit. It's unfortunate that um, to the applicant that this was, they were placed in this, this place. It's about you know, the diligence of staff to be like, okay, come on guys, you, you put them in a place. But I still got a hold to what the spirit and the letter of what we're doing in that area. So I've got a pause on this uh, for changing it um, beyond letting it be an auto broker. So that, that's all I got to say, Madam Chair. I've got a pause right now. And I understand this clearly. I understand where it is. I know what it looks like and I get it. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I yield, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Any other remarks or comments from the board? Or Madam questions? Chair. Okay. Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, Allison, how large is this lot? It is 0.45 acres. So it's less than half an acre? Yes, ma'am. it's got a house on it? Yes, ma'am. Where in the world do they put 10 vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you, uh, if you have a car lot, you got to have parking for... Uh, people coming to look at your cars. So uh, I just don't see how it can fit just uh, in the logistic way. <laughs> so um, I just I wanted to make sure I heard you right. Or I, I think it was Mr. Thompson that brought out the fact that it was uh, less than a half an acre. And so um, I just wanted to clarify that. And thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Any other remarks or questions from the board? Okay. I just uh, had one question uh, for our applicant. Certainly, is this, this uh, the, your, your building or your operation is located on one of the busiest uh, quarters in terms of our state road within the county. And I'm um, just, can you speak to some of the unloading and loading of your your cars because that is a very dangerous highway, state road, because of the amount of traffic and the volume of tra traffic that comes through there daily. Um, our applicant, I don't want to ruin your name, Mr. D'Amelio, did I say that correctly? Yeah, um, Mr. Damini, but I am King Fleet. His name is um, Dami, Dami Lola. Yes, sir. I'm all about safety. Uh, Sir, so I'm just loading asking. And loading our inventories. We most hardly, most times, we get on the rare occasions, almost um, we get inventories that are not running. Yeah. Okay. Inventory, okay. take delivery of them, and we neatly drive them in here. So we don't bring straight from the auctions, just mm -hmm. like having a long trailer, nine foot trailers coming to pick them or drop them here. So we'll have a way up somewhere that will pay for, will pay and get those things offloaded, get them clean enough before we drive them in here. Yes. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question. You, you did, you. I'm, I'm just not quite settled with just because of those safety measures that have come along with that uh, busy, busy um, state road, a uh, lot of cars, a lot of volume, a lot of potential for accidents and certainly 
the board of commissioners and I are responsible for everybody that drives through this county. So, um, okay, that was just my, I just had that general question for you. So if there's nothing else from the board, I'll yield back to you, uh, Chairman Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Planning and Zoning Board, can I get a motion for this application? This is Frank Payne. Uh, I make a motion to deny application Z2022-07, a request for a rezoning from general commercial to heavy commercial as presented by staff and based on the findings that were outlined. Thank you. Can I get a second? This is Teresa Knowles, I second. All right, second, Teresa Knowles. As I call your name, please give me a yay or nay on application 20Z2022-07. Uh, Teresa Knowles? Yay. Kirk Nicholson? Yay. Frank Payne? Yay. Brandon Penniman? Yay. Vice Chair, yay as well. We have unanimous vote. Um, Madam Chair, and it carries to deny Z2022-07. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Thomas. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. may I? Yes, you may. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to the Board of Commissioners, I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Board to deny Application Z2022-07. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District one. Yes. Okay, I hear you now. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote to deny Z-2022-07, and the motion carries. All right, I will yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. You have a motion. Okay, sure. mm -hmm. All right, thank you for your participation, sir. Um, thank you. We ask for the next item on the agenda. Mr. Roberts. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Next item on the agenda is uh, S022-08. Please mute all your mics, please, everyone. Please, please mute everyone. all your mics. Please, thank you. S022-08, special use permit, Franklin T. Butler. There's a request for a special use permit to allow 2,400 square foot awning on RA residential agriculture located at 9653 West Union Hill Road, Villa Rica, land lot 51, district two, section five, section 14. Lot size is 4.35 acres. This is in commission district number four, chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's Phil Schaefer's case. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Oh, good. We can, hear, we can hear you, Phil. Cool. So the property is uh, located at 9653 West Union Hill. It's improved with single family residence and a couple of out storage buildings. The applicant's proposing a 40 by 60 storage structure over a slab with sides to, in order to store the camper trailers and some yard equipment. The uh, property is in the southwest area of the county, and it is in the Dog River Basin, so it's off West Union Hill Road. As you can see, the aerial photography here on the right shows the house and the driveway in, the uh, awning, the garage for the store, the cars, and there's a storage structure. In the area immediately to the west of the existing driveway, some trees have been cleared in order to make room for the new storage structure. The reason for the special use permit is that in the code, there is a provision that allows for 
storage structures to have a certain amount of square footage. And when you have a certain amount of acreage, you're allowed to have X number of square feet. In this case, uh, what is being asked of us is to increase that amount of square footage beyond what we normally could do administratively. And so in that instance, we were required to bring this request for the board in order to get approval of a 2,400 square foot awning and with sides storage structure for the equipment and the RV that they wish to store. Here's a picture of the front yard. The trailer obviously would be underneath an awning when he gets it built. That's another view of the inn. So you can see the storage awning for the existing cars. There's another storage structure in the house and uh, posted the property. In reviewing the application against the criteria, it does meet and is supported by all of the criteria for granting the special use permit. And staff has proposed that the uh, approval of the ask the request for S2208 with the following findings that the use will not substantially modify the land use plan or the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. The use will not negatively impact surrounding properties and the granting of the special use permit will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. I've added one recommended condition that the special use permit is issued for a 40 by 60 storage structure. Any other use of the property not identified within section 210 use is allowed in each zoning district specifically tables 2.2 and 2.3 of the Douglas County Unified Development Code may require submission review and approval of a new special use permit. And then staff is directed to go out at the anniversary of uh, this approval, should you approve it, and just inspect to verify that the property was developed according to the plan. Uh, again, this is strictly because the special use permit is allowed under the code for structures that are in excess of the 1500 feet uh, square feet that would be allowed. He's asking for 2400. And I, I believe he's on the line. Um, if you wish to ask him direct questions or allow him to make an additional presentation. Mr. Chairman, I yield back to you. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Will the applicant or the representative please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record and present any information you would like for the planning and zoning board and the board of commissioners to hear. You have a total of 15 minutes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. This is Joe Fowler. I'm here on behalf of Tom Butler. Tom and his wife have been friends of mine for years, ever since I started working out at the Health and Athletic Club. And he's here with me tonight. And he's asked me just to help him walk through both the initial application process. Phil has expressed exactly what the Butlers are planning to do. That is to build this 40 by 60 awning covered structure with foundation that was described so they can park some campers and yard and lawn equipment. The, the covered structures will have sides as Phil mentioned. Tom, you wanna to talk a little bit about what your exact plans are? Oh, well, we finally got to a point in our life where we could afford a camper. <clears throat> We've lived out in that, uh, in our house, had the land there for 45 years. And uh, we, once we got the camper, we realized that we needed to have a good cover for it. And so uh, we, um, we basically need to get that done uh, so that we can uh, protect our interests for the camper and um, utilize the land that we've had there for 45 years. That's it, Mr. Chairman. If any questions, Tom and his wife can respond to any of those questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, now I'm going to open up the to public hearing. Is anyone in favor of this applicant and wish to speak? Please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes each with a total of 30 minutes to speak in favor of this applicant. I'll, I'll speak in favor. Um, <clears throat> James Sumners, 5362 Highway 5. Uh, simply put, I, I just don't think it's the county's business to decide what kind of what size pole barn somebody should be able to put on their property. So I would say allow it. All right. Anything else? Mr. Sum Mr. Sumner, anything else? All right. 
Anyone else want to speak in favor of the, this applicant? All right. I'll open the floor to anyone that's want to oppose this application. You have, uh, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes each with a total combined of 30 minutes in opposition to this application. Hearing none, I'm going to close this public hearing. Planning and zoning board, do you have any questions? Hearing none, Madam Chair, are you the floor to you? Oh, we had a plan and zoning board. You had a question, uh, Chairman Scott Nicholson. I was just curious as to what size is this camper? It's, it seems like a very large structure just to protect a camper. So, uh, is that Mr. Fowler, Mr. Fowler, you want to address that? Yeah, Tom's going to answer that. We have two campers, and uh, one of them is a 34 foot camper. One of them is a 28 foot camper. Uh, plus the tongs on them. And then I've got uh, some lawnmower equipment and uh, other yard equipment that I've never had a place to store it and uh, mainly to keep that down there as well. Thank you. Any other questions from the Planning Zoning Board? No, oh, hearing none. Madam Chair, I yield the floor to you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you so much, Chairman Thomas. What commissioners, do we have any uh, questions for the applicant at this time? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Guido, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Butler, uh, I noticed that there are trees out along your driveway and everything. Will there be kind of a buffer that will uh, hide uh, this uh, structure? Yeah, we don't want to remove the trees that are there. Um, just to give it a buffer and give it a little bit of protection. I don't want people to know what a, what's got over there. And I think it's a, is enough of a cloaking device to keep people's eyes off of things. Okay, will the structure have doors or sides? It'll be, it'll, it'll be open on both ends so that, uh, and big enough, that's the question earlier, so that I can drive through the thing and not bust up the sides and everything like that. <laughs> And I, we designed it that way so I didn't have to back the thing in. I understand. Uh, so it, it, I think it uh, logically, it, it looks like a good plan. I hope I'll be able to avoid <laughs> the sides of the building. Uh, we do our fire do stations it. that way, but we don't back <laughs> it. So I understand. <laughs> right. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bader. Okay, any other uh, questions or remarks from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, if there are no other questions, I yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Planning and Zoning Board, can I get a motion for application uh, S-2022-08? Mr. Chairman, this is Teresa Knowles. I make a motion to approve application S-2022-08 zero eight uh, a request for a special use permit to allow a 2400 square foot awning with the findings and conditions as presented by staff Mr. chairman Mr. Thank Nicholson, i second that so. thank you mr nichols as i call your name i'm going to ask for yay or nay on application 2022-08 teresa knows yay Kirk Nicholson? Yay. Frank Payne? Yay. Brandon Penniman? Yay. Vice Chair, yay as well. Madam, Madam Chair, we please mute your system. Thank you. Madam Chair, we pass back over to you with unanimous uh, carry approval of S2022-08. Great, thank you so much, uh, Chairman Thomas. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and the answers. Do we have a motion to approve? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I make a motion to approve application S2022-08 as approved by the Planning and Zoning Board. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. 
and a discussion board. We have a motion and a second. When I call you districts, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote to approve S 2022 08 and the motion carry. I yield Thank back. Thank you very you, much. Chairman. Thank um, you, Mr. Um, Chairman. All right. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Well, good luck to you, Mr. Butler. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roberts, would you like to introduce the next agenda item? Absolutely, Chairman. It's a, a request for a special use permit in RLD for an accessory uh, guest home located at 5999 Dorset Shoals, Douglasville, Land Lot 63, District 2, Section 5, Parcel 71. Lot size is 6.707. Application signed by Jeffrey Ruff. This is uh, Commission District Number 3. All right, uh, in regard to the existing conditions on the property, it is located on the south side of Dorset Shoals Road. Uh, this is just east of the intersection with the Kings Highway. Uh, it is located in a rural residential area of the county, um, and there is already an existing house, a detached garage, and a swimming pool on the property. Uh, the principal dwelling on the property is 1,912 square feet. Uh, this because relevant because um, uh, the uh, applicant is wishing to construct a 1,000 square foot detached accessory dwelling on the property. Under our current code requirements, uh, you are allowed to construct up to 60% of the size of the principal dwelling uh, as an accessory dwelling. Uh, so this currently does meet that requirement. Here is uh, the zoning map on the property showing the residential low density as well as the uh, adjacent zoning on the property. Here is an aerial view of the property. Uh, you can see it is a flag lot uh, set back about 500 feet from the road. Um, you can see the existing house, swimming pool, and garage on the property. Here is the site plan um, showing the existing house. And then uh, the proposed detached accessory dwelling is located uh, in front of the property. Uh, typically under our code, it would be required to be to the side or rear, but given the fact that the property is uh, set so far back in the road, we do feel that the proposed position is suitable, um, particularly in regard to the fact that it is positioned here to take advantage of the soils for the septic tank. And so we just wanted to note that up front. Here is the view um, from Dorset Shoals Road of the property. Again, noting that the proposed location for the house is set back approximately 500 feet uh, and there is ample screening from the property. Uh, and the uh, view from across the street is uh, a wooded undeveloped lot. Here is the view looking east on Dorset Shoals and the view looking west on Dorset Shoals. Staff analyzed the special use permit criteria and we found that the request was uh, substantially compatible with the Unified Development Code. Uh, therefore, the planning department is recommending approval of the special use permit. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, again, a point of order, please uh, mute your system if you're not speaking. We hear some uh, over. Okay. You will applicant or representative, please unmute yourself. State your name and address. And Hello, this is Jeffrey Ruff, and my address is 2135 Unity Trail in Marietta, Georgia, 30064. Um, I am a licensed builder in the state of Georgia and have been hired by um, my client to build a home for their elderly mother. Um, this is the situation where her daughter owns the property and has an existing home on the property with a pool and an ex uh, auxiliary garage as well. Um, they have requested that they would like to build a home for their mom, which is like a zero entry. Their mother has knee problems and she's currently living in the dining room of her daughter's home on the property because she cannot go up and down the stairs. So they would like to build a home on this property that their mother could live in uh, for the rest of her life. And at some point when she passes, they would like to, um, my client would like to gift this home to her granddaughter. 
therefore they would like to keep it all as like a family piece of property. Um, and I believe we meet the square footage requirements and all the stipulations required in order to be able to do so. All right. Anything else? Um, unless you have questions, I, that's kind of okay. their situation. And uh, I think it sits way back off the road. We, we tried really hard to make sure that we designed a home in such a way that it would complement the property. Um, call it a family compound, if you will, but it's almost six acres. Um, it sits way back off the road and they just want to be able to take care of their elderly mother and get her out of their dining room she can't go upstairs because she can't climb the stairs. So if she can build a home there, then it can be what we call a, as a builder, we call a zero entry with no stairs, uh, no steps, and they can take care of her and she can enjoy her elderly years being close to her family. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes each with a total of 30 minutes. Anyone want to speak in favor of this application? All right, hearing none, I'm not going to open the floor to anyone in opposition to this application. Please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes with the total allotted of 30 minutes. Anyone in opposition to this application? All right, hearing none, going to now close the public hearing. Any questions from the Planning and Zoning Board? Uh, yes, this is Frank Payne. Uh, I have a question for the applicant. Do you uh, will it be set up on uh, sewage or septic? How how would it be handled? Yes, sir. The existing home is on a septic tank, and we have submitted a plan to um, Douglas County for an additional septic tank to be added to the property which is indicated on the site plan uh, that was submitted with our application. It will be a separate system from the existing one that the daughter has in her existing home on the property. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. It's Rob Thomas. I have a, I have a question for, yes, the, sir. for the staff. I have it for the staff, actually. Okay. Um, this, has this gone through a DRC review or, or needs to go through it after this, uh, if it's approved? Um, this will not have to be presented to DRC because it is a residential um, uh, site plan. So it will only have to apply for a building permit uh, and go through the walkthrough process for a residential building permit. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the Planning Zoning Board? All right, hearing none. Madam Chair, I yield the floor to you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? From the Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or remarks for the applicant or the employee or our staff, should I say? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carpenter, you have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Ruff. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my question to you, uh, is, is the applicant there by chance with you? No, she is not. She's elderly, and they had uh, given me the approval to, as a Georgia licensed builder, to act on their behalf. Okay, I get it. So I'll ask you, maybe you know, is there yes, a reason why they didn't just want to add on to the existing home for their, for their uh, mother? Um, she is a independent woman who is headstrong and believes that she has the wherewithal to take care of herself 
Um, she did not want to subdivide the property because she felt as if she could live there and enjoy her elderly years. And then she would like to, upon her passing at some point, I mean, circle of life, but she would like to gift it to her granddaughter. And it would be kind of like a, a family farm, you know, they would all live together. It's, they bought this property for that purpose, thinking that they could do this without having to go through this process. But we later learned that that was necessary once they hired me to design and build the house for them. And they asked me to represent them on their, on their behalf. But um, she, um, I, I got you because I'm strong and independent as well. So, yes, so I totally she, understand. <laughs> she is elderly and she does have knee problems, which the stairs were a problem for her. But uh, she's financially secure. Uh -huh. She wants to build her own house. She likes to cook her own food. She likes to take care of herself. And she's like, when I can't do that anymore, then we'll talk about something different. But I want my own house. I don't want to live in my daughter's dining room. Fair enough. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I just wondered why they didn't want to build on, but once you once you said she's she's strong and she's and a very strong willed yeah. woman. Actually her daughters both work for her. She is a CPA and she still runs the show. Got you. Fair enough. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you. That that's that's my that was my only question. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carthen. Any other questions from the board? Okay. If it, did I hear someone? No, I'm good. I'm sure. I, okay. I'm good. Okay. Okay. If there are no other questions, I yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion from the Planning and Zoning Board on application S2022-11? Mr. Chairman, Ms. Kurt Nicholson. I make a motion to approve S2022-11 uh, as per a staff recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Can I get a second? This is Frank Payne, a uh, second. All right, Frank Payne, second. So when I call your name, please respond with a yay or nay. Ms. Teresa Knowles? Yay. Mr. Kirk Nicholson? Yay. Mr. Frank Payne. Yay. And Mr. Brent, Brandon Prennan. Yay. All right, the motion carries. I yield back before the Madam Chair with an approval of S2022-11. Okay, just one little correction for you, Chairman Thomas. I don't believe you voted. Did you vote as well? That's correct. Uh, Chairman Thomas, yay. So we have unanimous vote. All right, thank you. Board of Commissioners, you have heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I make a motion to accept the approval recommendation for the special use permit for application S-2022-11. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? Madam uh, Chair. Chairman Robinson, you have a chance. Yeah, I just want to make a quick comment that I do acknowledge uh, when it comes to dignity, whether it's age or disability, I hear it. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. I'm not going to be defined and put in a box. And it's like, no, and I, I appreciate the spirit of what I heard. Like, I get it. Sometimes we as society try to predefine people on how they should live. And they have the options. And I, I, I love that what I heard. And I just want to just acknowledge that. Um, and the consideration that's being given. That's all I want to say, Madam Chair. I yield. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chairman Robinson. Any other remarks, board? Okay, if not, we have a motion and a second. Before we have a motion and a second, when I call your districts, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a five-zero unanimous vote, and the motion carries to approve S twenty twenty two. In the motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like to really uh, express my appreciation to the board and for all of your time. And uh, 
we will build a beautiful house for this um, wonderful woman to enjoy her years with her family and her independence as long as she can. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I'll yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item? Yes, Chairman. It's a Z220-12 Stratus property, 4291 Highway 5, Douglasville 30135. Land lot 69, District 2, Section 5, Parcel 11. Current zoning is general commercial conditions. The, re the request is medium density, single family residential on 18.16 acres. The uh, staff recommendation is approval of rezoning to RMD with conditions. All right. Uh, so this property is located on the east side of Highway 5. It was previously zoned to general commercial with conditions in 1989 in anticipation of future commercial development. Uh, the conditions placed on the property in 1989 reserved the property fronting on Mason Creek Road for residential development and imposed a buffer against any future commercial development. Those conditions have been satisfied and since then the property has not been used for commercial development uh, since the rezoning. There was one small residential structure on the property but that was demolished in 2020. Um, so the applicant is requesting a rezoning to medium density single family residential for the purpose of constructing about 40 single family residential lots. Uh, the proposed lots will be adjacent to an existing subdivision known as the fields that was constructed by the applicant in the early 2000s. Uh, so what we have here uh, is the current zoning on the property. You can see that it is zoned uh, general commercial with conditions. Um, and here I am showing you uh, an aerial image of the property. Um, you can see that it currently has frontage on Highway 5, uh, and you can see that it all ha also has access here on Greenfield Drive. Uh, here is a view um, from Highway 5. This is showing the, the placement of the driveway in the former house site. That house was demolished in 2020. Uh, and here is the view where the cul-de-sac on Greenfield Drive accesses the property. Uh, and here is a view in the opposite direction on Greenfield Drive in the existing neighborhood. This is the site plan uh, showing the 40 lots that was submitted with the application. Uh, and here is a detail submitted by the applicant showing two acres that they propose uh, to develop as a part of the, uh, the new development to include uh, an active play area uh, with basketball court uh, a gazebo and mail kiosk. Uh, staff did analyze the zoning criteria set out in the Unified Development Code, and we did find the zoning uh, request to be substantially compatible with the Unified Development Code. Therefore, planning staff recommends approval of the request to rezone the property from general commercial with conditions to single family medium density residential district with the following findings and conditions. Uh, number one, the rezoning is consistent with the Douglas County Unified uh, excuse me, the Douglas County Comprehensive Plan and the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. Uh, number two, a negative impact to surrounding properties will not result from the rezoning. And number three, the granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare and represents best planning practices. Uh, we're also recommending uh, several conditions. Number one, a five-foot sidewalk located four feet behind the curb is required along both sides of all proposed roads as shown. Number two, roadway shall be 24 feet wide asphalt and 28 foot back of curb to back of curb measurements. Number three, there shall be no direct access to Highway 5. Number four, because this property also fronts Highway 5, a minimum of five foot wide sidewalk shall be installed along the entire property frontage of Highway 5. Location and approval of sidewalk will be determined by GDOT. Number five, per the Unified Development Code, curb and gutter with appropriate drainage structures are required along the frontage of Highway 5 with GDOT approval. Uh, number six, per the Unified Development Code, additional right-of-way is required to meet the minimum right-of-way of a major arterial roadway on Highway 5. Therefore, additional right-of-way equal to one half of a 120-foot right-of-way shall be dedicated to GDOT per their approval. Number seven, a copy of the approved GDOT work permit is required for any work within the GDOT right-of-way. Number eight, per the Unified Development Code, 
compliance with the applicable provisions of the highway corridor overlay shall be enforced for this project. The Douglas County Development Review Committee shall have discretion to enforce provisions of the highway corridor overlay along with the approved zoning conditions to achieve the desired outcome of the Unified Development Code for the frontage along Highway 5. Number nine, the Development Review Committee shall have discretion to direct staff to schedule the zoning action to be returned to the Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners to consider rezoning of the property at the next regularly scheduled zoning hearing if the property fails to be brought into compliance with the required conditions or other applicable codes and regulations. And number 10, any existing wells or septic tanks on the property must be located and mitigated prior to the issuance of land disturbance permit. Mm -hmm. The tank must be pumped, crushed, and filled. Proof must be submitted to the Environmental Health Office prior to any construction. Wells will need to be filled by a licensed well driller and proof must be submitted to the Environmental Health Office prior to any construction. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Will the applicant or the representative please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record and present any information you would like for the Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Commissioners to hear. You have a total of 15 minutes. Evening again, everyone. This is Joe Fowler, Post Office Box 489, Douglasville. Joining us on the line is Mr. Johnny Blankenship, who will be building the houses on the proposed development. Blankenships have been building houses in Douglas County for decades. Bill Campbell is the owner. We hope that he'll be joining us shortly. He's way out of town on a trip with his son that has been planned for more than a year. He hopes to be able to get access to join us. As was just mentioned, Mr. Campbell purchased this property. That was years and years ago. And it was he and Gerald Van Zandt that developed the property that is now the Fields subdivision. And at the same time he bought that property, he bought this property, 18.16 acres. And of course, that's the property that is the subject of this rezoning. It was all one parcel. And at that time, based on recommendations of dealing with the staff and others, it was thought that an appropriate commercial node might be appropriate right there at the end. What happened after that was in 2003, Mr. Campbell developed the subdivision, that is the field subdivision with its 75 or so lots, but retained this particular 18 acres for, as I just mentioned, that future commercial expansion. As it happens, there's been no development concerning commercial uses at this point. There never was a demand. Later, sometimes later, Mr. Campbell decided that Given the demand for new quality housing in the county, he and Mr. Blankenship would move ahead with what essentially they see as phase two of the fields subdivision. So the plan before you calls for 40 lots built around that single cul-de-sac. Now you'll notice on the site plan that a community recreation area is planned where the new subdivision adjoins lots five, six, seven and eight of the Ridge Moore subdivision. And then you'll also notice, Allison, if you can move that up a little bit or look at the other one, that is the other site plan, that there's a small green space where the subdivision, where the extension of the subdivision joins lots 61, 62, and 63. As Allison also explained, the requested rezoning is a down zone from general commercial to residential medium density. The minimum lot size is 10,000 square feet, as you know, under that classification, but several of the lots are right at one third of an acre. In fact, the overall density yield, when you look at the entire tract is 2.2 lots per acre. The houses to be built by Mr. Blankenship will be in the 375,000 to $400,000 price range we had a Zoom call with some of the members of the subdivision and were able to explain some details about that. And then more recently, we had a meeting at the Intermodal Transportation Center with, I believe, four representatives of the subdivision and talked about the overall play area. I'm sorry, the overall development, but most notably with respect to the play area. Now, Allison, would you mind shifting back to the play area for just a moment? What you see there is a plan for a basketball court, a play yard, and a mail kiosk, along with a parking area. Right now, just to the north of the cul-de-sac that you see pictured, there's 
basketball goal um, on the side of the road near one of the lots that are about 100 feet north of what you see is that cul-de-sac. And so the developer and I and the builder were thinking that perhaps doing something more formal in terms of a basketball court would be appropriate. We got some negative feedback from the neighbors about that so that we are prepared to work with the people in the subdivision with the staff about fine tuning what they may request in this particular play area. There's also a plan to develop a trail network within the development. And then of course, sidewalks are one of the conditions. In fact, it's condition number one from the staff. We have had a number of interactions with residents of the fields. We understand that they have some concerns. One of the concerns, of course, is trying to take the traffic off of the subdivision that comes off Mason Creek and Berea. But of course, the staff has recommended no access to Highway 5, and we have therefore designed it accordingly. We believe the proposed use is frankly the highest and best use for this property. It's consistent with the comprehensive plan. Staff has looked at it carefully. Mr. Campbell, Mr. Blankenship have been looking at it for a long time. They're gonna build quality housing. And we believe that this request is just a logical extension of the existing subdivision, sort of like phase two. And, it, and plus it takes away the development for any commercial purposes. Okay. So this All of the conditions are acceptable to our client with one exception, and that is number five. We looked at the issue about whether or not the DOT would approve curb and guttering on Highway 5. We're not sure about that. So we've got a little question mark about that, if I can just bring that for the board at this particular point. The other conditions are acceptable. Rather than doing the sidewalk, however, as has been done in the past, they are prepared to pay into the sidewalk fund in lieu of that since there's no other sidewalk on the road in that location. But again, we know we got to go back to the DRC with respect to that. And we are open for comments from staff with respect to that. Mr. Chairman, that is our brief presentation. Mr. Blankenship is here. He can talk about other houses that he's built in the area. Any specific questions you may have for him, either about the development or the homes that would be constructed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Is there anyone else that you want to bring on right now? No, so we'll just respond to questions. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, we're now going to open to the public hearing. Anyone in favor and wishes to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system. State your name and address for the record. Then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes each with a 30 minute allowed for. Uh, total allowed. Anyone in favor of this application? Yes, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Patty Hunlock. I'm at 5206 Pamela Drive, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. The first thing is, is it said that this was on the east side of Highway 5? I believe it's actually on the west side of Highway 5. The other thing is, uh, instead of doing, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the subdivision going in, but I'm just concerned that there's almost too many houses going in into this property. Instead of doing medium density, why can it not be low density? And uh, as far as, and then it would be nice that there was a buffer between Highway 5 and the back of the houses so that you can't actually see them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of this application? All right, hearing none. I'm now going to open the floor to anyone in opposition that wish to speak. Please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes each with a total time allotted of 30 minutes. 
Hello, my name is Koya Perry. I live at 4195 Greenfield Drive, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. I have lived in um, my home for close to 15 years. And one of the things that attracted me to the home was the cul-de-sac and the green space in front of our homes within the cul-de-sac. And so basically, there will be a new subdivision coming down our one street for a subdivision that already has 75 homes with one entrance. Now we're adding 40 more homes using that same one entrance. So that's like an additional 90 plus cars coming up and down this one street with this one entrance. Um, and we, we're just not interested in that. Um, and also regarding the play area, because we have lived here for so long, the idea of kids literally playing outside of your window in a designated spot, you know, during the summers, just a gathering spot, because I believe there's a gazebo there. So that offers the opportunity for picnics and barbecues, literally outside of your window. That is just not something that we are interested in. Um, a couple of months ago, they did present a plan to us that had the entrance coming on Highway 5. I'm not sure why that was changed back to the original plan of having the traffic come through our subdivision, but we would like them to reconsider having the entrance on Highway 5 as they did before because they submitted the plan for that and we we were okay with the, the entrance on Highway 5. So that is really all that I have to say. We are definitely opposed to another subdivision coming through our existing established subdivision. All right, thank you, Ms. Perry. Anyone else want to speak in opposition to this application? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's my Kelly Davis. Uh, one at a time, please. I think uh, Ms. Shelly Davis, you go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Shelly Davis, uh, 4199 Greensfield Drive, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. Uh, I would like to say that I oppose the zoning request for status properties to place in the entrance inside the field subdivision. I actually live across the street right exactly where the front entrance to this new subdivision is going to be. Um, I can submit actually 49 reasons why this is not a great idea for our neighborhood. And I actually have over 33 signatures from red, from four, 26 homes that are also opposed. Some reasons to include are loss of our privacy, uh, increased vehicle traffic, concern of increase in crime and safety, uh, foot traffic throughout the neighborhoods, uh, construction noise, uh, construction materials in the road, equipment going in and out uh, while the uh, premises is being built, drop debris. Uh, most of the residents um, along Greenfield Drive are either retired or work from home and have already been in this established neighborhood uh, almost to the existence of the build of this neighborhood. Uh, I'd also like to say that this will call it excessive delivery traffic uh, uh, from vehicles, uh, Amazon, UPS, Postman, FedEx, school buses, uh, outside family and friends, DoorDash even, to name a few that will come down this one street, as uh, Ms. Perry mentioned in her speech before me. Um, I'd also say that the schools are already overcrowded, so this is gonna add extra stress to the drop-off and pickup lines for parents. Um, please keep in mind that there's been four changes to the zoning plan. Uh, we did not hear about the play area until the community meeting. Um, so this means Stratus is now expecting the fields residents to take the brunt of the entire play, playground area and the amenities, as well as a mail and pickup drop off area right in front of our homes. And they will be utilizing our cul-de-sac that we've all, always had. Um, this will also mean that delivery vehicle, vehicles will drop their mail off in front of our home in this cul-de-sac, along with the 40 homeowners or more that will be stopping and picking up to get their mail. So we will have to have all these vehicles turning around in this one cul-de-sac. I have lived in this neighborhood for 12 years and I purchased my home for the simple fact that there were no homes across from my, my pr uh, property and its privacy and the uh, closeness to the private cul-de-sac. Uh, to have trees ripped from our view, the loss of our pet and play area um, that we have succumbed to, and with the 40 homes that could bring upwards of 80 to 90 plus cars uh, is a lot to take in. Um, 
Stratus has only presented one positive reason uh, in the community meetings, and that was to increase our home values, um, but that will also increase our property taxes. So this is something that I'm not in favor of as well. Um, when asked the Stratus property why they can't put the interest on the Highway 5 side, as they would mentioned in the previous plans, we were only told that it just wouldn't work. Uh, well, we know that it won't work because it's possibly going to cost them a lot more to have to put the interest on the Highway 5 side, um, but yet I don't think it's fair for an established neighborhood um, to take the brunt of that fee, essentially. Uh, so I do propose to Stratus move the entrance to the Highway 5 side um, and leave the field subdivision uh, at B. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Anyone else in opposition to this application? Yes. Uh, James Sumner's uh, 5362 Highway 5. I think the proposed usage of the land is ideal. However, without significant improvement to the surrounding traffic infrastructure, I'm against the rezoning, this rezoning request. Assuming one and a half vehicles per household, this project aims to add 60 permanent vehicles to the traffic in this area. Regardless of where the access point is located, Along Highway 5 or along Greenfield Drive, this project will have a major impact to the traffic along the corridor of Highway 5 from Berea to Mason Creek Road. Highway 5 is already in dire need of resurfacing and acquires visible deterioration every day due to the traffic it already receives. Further, the intersection at Mason Creek and Highway 5 is currently oversaturated. It should be a roundabout of similar size to the one at Highway 5 and Highway 16, but if that isn't viable, there needs to be at least left turn lanes at this intersection on both directions of Highway 5. Without this intersection improvement and resurfacing of Highway 5, this proposal should fail. If the access point remains on Greenfield Drive, all of my statements about Highway 5 still apply, but the impact is even worse. With the access point at this location, it will have disastrous impact on the communities along Mason Creek and Berea Roads. It's already even more difficult to turn left on Highway 5 than it is to turn from Highway 5 onto these side roads. The light at Mason Creek does not help because there isn't enough time for oncoming traffic to clear in order for people turning left to still make the light. There should not be any new developments in this area without the traffic situation on Highway 5 being addressed first. That's all. All right, thank you, Mrs. Summers. Mrs. Summers, um, anyone else in opposition to this application? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, my name is Ronald Barnes. My address is 4203. Greenfield Drive, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. Where they're trying to cut the entrance to the subdivision will come right out in front of my home and uh, Miss Shelley Davis's home. And it will just destroy the fabric of the neighborhood. It'll be a lot of cars, a lot of noise, and they will just come right in front of our homes. And it, we have kids to play out there. They could just put that entrance to that neighborhood in another area. Instead of trying to, it would just change our whole neighborhood with cars coming and going all day. It's hard to get out of a real road uh, onto Highway 5. Uh, it would just it would just change everything. I, I, we're not ready for all that noise, all the construction noise. And it would just, like I said, it would just destroy the fabric of our neighborhood. They should find some way to bring it in off Mason Creek or wherever, but it would just be too many homes, too many cars, too much noise. We don't know if it'll increase crime. We don't, we don't know what it will do. But I, I just don't think it's a good idea to try to build that subdivision and make the main entrance coming down Greenfield Drive from coming off Berea, down the fields, and coming down all those cars. We have kids to play in the neighborhood. We have a quiet neighborhood. I bought my home because it was quiet. It was in a cul-de-sac. And as in the green space in front of us, whether well, they build like this in their building, we're talking about hundreds of cars coming down one little residential street all day and all night. And I'm just not in favor of it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in opposition to application? Yeah, I. Uh, this is Patty Hunlock again at 5206 Pamela Drive. Like I said before, it's like, okay for a subdivision, but I kind of agree with all these people. And I just think that the uh, entrance to the subdivision should be off of Highway 5. The Highway 5 needs to be uh, reworked completely 
because it's just, it's a very dangerous road. Uh, and I mean, these people can't even get onto Highway 5 from Berea as it is now. And that's just gonna make it even more worse. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? All right, here and now. Mr. Ramos, go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, my name is Anthony Ramos. I live in 4191 Greenfield Drive, Douglasville, Georgia. And uh, <clears throat> where the zoning is gonna be taking place is gonna be right in front of my property. And um, I've been maintaining that property, that piece of land right there for the last 15 years. And I've been the one cutting the grass, you know, spraying weed killer, edging it, just maintaining it basically for the last 15 years. And that's a good play area for the kids and everything that live in the neighborhood and like to live there. And I just feel like adding 40 more homes, two cars per house minimum, that's going to be 80 cars trying to go out through Berea Road at the same time where there's a Lionsgate, another neighborhood that has more than 50 houses down and then down the street from uh, from Berea Road, we have Ashton Heights, another giant neighborhood that's going to have more cars trying to go funnel through that. Like, I'm just saying, like, the traffic situation is going to be a lot worse and through Mason Creek Road also. But um, I just wanted to say I just I'm, I'm completely opposed to it because just of the traffic situation that's going to be there already and the traffic situation that's going to be inside the neighborhood and all the people that have already lived here for the last 15 years, you know, we're going to lose our beautiful tree site. Instead, we're going to, you know, just look at ba uh, people's backyards and stuff like that. But yeah. That's, that's all I got to say. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else in opposition to this application? All right, hearing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any any questions from either applica applicants or, plan or um, staff? Um, well, I have a question for the staff. Um, uh, who was this? Uh, Allison. Case. Yes, sir. Allison? Mm -hmm. Can you can you speak to the traffic study and the findings? Uh, sure thing. Director Valentin is also on the line. Um, this was not a uh, project that exceeded a threshold that would require a traffic study um, to be completed. Um, so we uh, did not require a traffic study. Um, the 40 lots is not something, um, my understanding from our transportation staff, but I will defer to Director Valentin to correct anything that I say that is wrong, um, is that th though I'm sensitive to the, to the concerns expressed by the neighborhood, um, the 40 lots are not um, anything that would exceed a threshold that would cause our network to underperform. Um, and they do not exceed a threshold that would trigger a traffic study under our local code, uh, nor under the requirements of a development of regional impact. Um, uh, but I would defer to Director Valentin if there's anything that he would like to add in that regard. Director Valentin, anything yes. you'd like to? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, Allison. I think you you covered it. Essentially, uh, the the number of lots that are being proposed does not trigger the requirement for a formal uh, traffic study. Uh, that said, there there are ways of estimating uh, the volume of traffic that would be generated by a development. And we've taken a look at that. And, and essentially, it, it's a little under uh, 400 vehicles a day uh, during peak hours is about 30 to 35, depending whether it's AM or PM peak hour. So the impact is not uh, substantial. Uh, as it relates to the location of the access point, we viewed this as a second phase of a planned subdivision. And so the, the extension of uh, uh, the access from, from the existing access road seemed to, uh, to us to be uh, reasonable and logical. Um, and that is the reason why uh, we do not, uh, uh, we would favor access from the existing road uh, rather than Highway 5. All right, thanks, sir. Well, well, speaking of that, 
could it go in a different direction? Could it come from Highway 5 instead? Um, I mean, just practical purposes, could that happen? It, it, is, it is possible that uh, uh, an application uh, could be taken to the Georgia DOT. The, the county actually does not have direct jurisdiction. We, we review the development based on our code and, and we preface the, the comments as it relates to road improvements with the understanding that GDOT will have the ultimate say. They do take into account what our local requirements are, uh, but it is possible that an application to GDOT um, with, with an access of a Highway 5 may be uh, acceptable to them. However, they will require whatever improvements to, to accommodate that, such as potentially a left turn bay uh, coming northbound on Highway 5 to turn left onto um, a new road that would be constructed if they allow it. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the Planning and Zoning Board? All right, hearing none. Madam Chair, I uh, yield the floor to you for questions from the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much, Chairman Thomas. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions or remarks for either the applicant or the staff? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Carpenter, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, Attorney Fowler? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Can you can you speak to some of the concerns that you have heard from the constituents in regard? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, since January, no, since back in December, we we tried to have meetings, and we had a, a Zoom call with some that joined, and then of course there was the meeting with the intermodal transportation area, and we knew the issue was raised with respect to access. To Highway 5. In fact, there was a drawing that we did that did provide access there, but then we got the staff recommendation as explained by Director Valentine, and we went back to what we had before. As he also said, all along, Mr. Campbell has seen this, this area as an extension of the existing subdivision. And since there was no commercial use that ever seemed logical in that area for a number of months, years, actually, he's been looking for the time to extend to provide other housing. The reality is there is an extraordinary demand for quality housing in Douglas County. In fact, talk to any person who's involved in the real estate industry, the, in the real estate industry, the inventory is at an all time low in Douglas County. And this particular market in the price range that's just been mentioned, 375 to 400,000 is in great demand. And so because of that, even though we've tried to look at some of the concerns that the residents in the neighborhood, the neighborhood built by Mr. Campbell for that matter, we tried to address the issues by first looking at Highway 5, but having to go back through the neighborhood because of what the staff and the DOT has concluded and so because of that, what we've said is we can do anything we possibly can to address the concerns you have about the play yard. We can do away with the play yard. We thought it was doing the neighborhood a favor because there's a basketball go in the middle of that very cul-de-sac about which you've heard comments. We will meet with the staff, we'll meet with the neighborhood to try to retrofit and redesign that play yard any way they want to. The idea was, remove some lots that could otherwise have been put there and provide something that would be an acceptable, appropriate green space type play yard area. And if that needs to be condition number 11, we are delighted to do it. We have to meet with the DRC anyway, of course, under the recommendations, and we are glad to do that. We know 30 people in the neighborhood are concerned about access through that location. We've tried to address it. We designed it differently. We are now a going by what the staff has recommended. And by the way, all the conditions are okay, except that one issue about curb and gutter along Highway 5, we would like to put a footnote and rest that, request that we be given an opportunity to deal with the DRC on that particular issue. Beyond that, we know they have concerns, but this project is designed to address the need for quality housing in Douglas County 
commissioners know about that, the planning commission knows about it, the staff knows, and the people in Douglas County recognize it. So that's that's really what we're trying to do, Commissioner Carson. Thank you, Attorney Fowler. Yes, On that note, have you put in a request? Have you has your um, applicant or your client um, broached GDOT in regards to this location? We did a design initially, submitted that to the city when we got to the county, rather. And then what came back was the recommendation to put access elsewhere, that is, through the subdivision for the reasons that were noted. Okay, so you have not addressed this with GDOT. You have not. We did not no, okay. ma'am, we did not go to the Georgia Department of Transportation. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Allison. Can you talk to us a bit about a bit about um, the access from Highway Five versus coming through the already existing subdivision? Um, I would uh, likely need to defer that to Director Valentine. Um, the uh, requirement to not have direct access to Highway Five was a condition that was proposed uh, by our transportation department. So I think the director is probably more suited to speak to that um, than I am. Thank you, Director Valentine. Yes, I'll be happy to um, to speak to that, Commissioner Carson. Again, as I mentioned, uh, typically, uh, again, we looked at the subdivision as an extension of an existing subdivision. And along any arterial road, and to some extent, uh, some collector roads, we look to minimize the, the conflict points, the uh, intersections. So if there's a way to, um, to have a single intersection on a major corridor versus two, that is typically preferable. Uh, so that's how we looked at, uh, at this uh, proposal. And we based the recommendation on that. Whenever there are uh, lots that may uh, abut an existing road, we make the recommendation that there be no access so that you can't have um, a property owner that perhaps fronts on a cul-de-sac towards the end of the subdivision uh, attempt to, to access from the road, uh, you know, from Highway 5 onto their property. So, so that recommendation of no access along the frontage is for that reason, so that uh, access is controlled from a single uh, location. So to that point, Director Valentin, access from Highway 5 would be one central location as opposed to having it come through another subdivision. I don't know if you've had a chance to go down and look at the subdivision to see where the where the uh, the entrance would be for all the reasons that the uh, the um, the ones who live there have proposed. If you know, in my eyes too, it just makes sense to come off Highway 5 if you're building a new subdivision. If we're going to rezone it, you know, from from commercial uh, general commercial to residential, then that means that area that we are improving, which Highway 5, I believe, is an area that we are improving. Of course, GDOT is the one responsible for making the improvements along that road. But of course, we, we want to put sidewalks because it is, you know, uh, adjacent to a school, it's adjacent to a high school, it's adjacent to a daycare down that way. Um, so, uh, you know, having sidewalks and improvements along Highway 5 uh, you know, and, and actually putting in buffers to help slow down that traffic that comes along Highway 5 once GDOT actually does repave it and, and get around about probably a half a mile up from there. Uh, it would just make more sense to come off Highway 5 and not to disturb the residents who are already there uh, for all the reasons that they've already, you know, presented. So, I know you wouldn't have the authority to say yes or no, that would be GDOT. You're just trying to make it uh, um, easier for the applicant. And I get that. Uh, so um, I, I accept your answer. I understand where you're coming from. Um, but again, it wouldn't be your call. It, it would be GDOT's call. Am I correct? Uh, yes, Commissioner. But, but I would want to clarify that um, making things easier for the applicant is usually not one of my strong suits. Okay. <laughs> and they will attest to that. So uh, <laughs> the, the reason I mentioned that, that uh, it would be preferable to have one access point, I was referring to the subdivision accessing Highway 5, that, that all of the traffic that now goes into the subdivision that uses Highway 5 
goes Berea to fields and into the subdivision. And that would be the same location that the additional traffic would use. So it's already you would stay with a single subdivision, a single point of entry to all of the parcels. Right. And that would make sense if this was already zoned for residential and had the applicant went ahead and just not touched it, just left left it as it was. And everybody would have known eventually that there were going to be more residents coming down here. Um, thank you. Thank you, Director Valentine. I appreciate you. And I don't want to take away your your toughness to, to, to not bend when it comes to things. So pardon me. <laughs> thank you. Um, so this is a tough one. Because Attorney Fowler, you are correct. We, we do need more of uh, available housing in Douglas County. You are absolutely correct. The board does know that. And we, and we do know that, um, you know, Douglas County is a desirable location for people and people do want to move here. And that's great. But the people who already live here also have a stake and a say in how they want their community because they're already here. And so, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what, um, um, the applicant would like to do. I just wish that you guys would consider Highway 5 as the access point because what you've heard from even the, the neutral party or the party that was in favor, they also too was wondering why not Highway 5. Yeah, okay. So I, I would be in favor of you at least broaching that with GDOT and possibly seeing if that would be uh, feasible as opposed to coming through the, the, the subdivision, uh, the field subdivision. As Commissioner Carthen, um, yes. we, we had, did have a design initially that provided for that. We got staff okay. recommendation. Okay. We are uh, perfectly willing to ask the Planning and Zoning Board and the commissioners to table it. Okay. Uh, we got the condition here. We need to talk to Miguel. Maybe we need to talk to the DOT. Um, the Blankenships are prepared to do the housing that we all know the county needs. Yes. Uh, Mr. Campbell, unfortunately, did not join us, and he obviously is a stakeholder in this. I know this is a little bit unusual for an applicant to ask for a tabling. We normally would work through these things in advance, but uh, we tried to make contact with you. I know you had concerns, obviously, about the traffic through the subdivision. So if it would be appropriate, we would ask for a tabling. We can talk to Mr. Campbell, who's away with his son. We can talk to Miguel offline and see what we can arrange with respect to access. And I say that with all due respect to everybody in the neighborhood, we knew what the issue was going to be. We're not trying to create issues. We're I trying to solve problems. That. Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. Attorney Fowler, so uh, um, I will turn it back <laughs> over to you, Madam Chair, to see if uh, Ron Roberts or the staff would entertain Attorney Fowler's um, request to table this matter. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you so much, Attorney Fowler. Um, at this time, um, I would add Ron Roberts, certainly, and also Allison Duncan, we are just sure. for you tabling. And so, and, and we certainly want to follow the formality and uh, certainly allow our planning and zoning uh, committee to uh, table. And then the Board of Commissioners will, I'll call a motion for us to table this item. If Madam that's Chair. Yes, Commissioner Car uh, Geiger. <laughs> uh, I would just like to make one other small adjustment if uh, they're con they will consider that the Highway 5 mm -hmm. exit mm -hmm. and entry is to align it with uh, Alexander Parkway. Because at some point in time, that will probably require a red light or something. I don't know. But... Um, mm -hmm. It just needs to be aligned with that road. It, okay. It's too far north, Commissioner Guider. If they, they're going to have to do away with one of the houses that back up to Highway 5 anyway. So they're going to have to uh, and put if they close off the other exit is what I'm saying. And so they're, they're going to have to make a way for the exit or the uh, entry. So why are you saying it's too far north? The, the um, subdivision. 
Yeah. Oh, so this oh, is Allison oh, Duncan. I can oh, just sure, jump in and, and clarify. I think if we're tabling, I'm not hearing that as a condition, correct? I think no, we're no. Just it's tabled. a recommendation. Uh -huh. Yeah. So so I think if we're hearing that there's maybe some consensus to table, then you know, let us kind of go back and you so, know look so. at some options and come back to the March first. It would be a table to the March first um, meeting, but we would welcome any direction that any of the PNZ board or board of commissioners would like us to explore. We would not hear that as a condition necessarily. We would just, I've been making notes of all of the feedback, you know, and right. we would just take that back and return back to you um, at the March 1st regular meeting um, with some additional information. Okay. Ma'am, thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Better. What I'm going to do, I'll yield back to you, Chairman uh, Thomas, to allow you to call a motion to table. Z 2022-12, and then certainly you'll yield back to me so I could uh, do the same for the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Planning and Zoning Board, and I get a motion to table Z 2022-12 for the March 1st meeting. This is Frank Payne. I recommend to table Z 20. 22-12 to the next March meeting. Thank you. Can I get a second? Can I get a second? Oops. It's Kurt Nicholson. I second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Okay, when I call your name, please respond with the yay or nay. Um, Theresa Knowles. Yay. Kirk Nicholson. Yay. Brandon Penniman. I think I heard a yay. Is that Brandon Penniman? Yay. There you go. And Mr. Frank Payne. Yay. And uh, Vice Chair, yay. Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to you for the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much. But it's not a decision. It's a decision. Okay, thank you. Chairman Thomas, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to table Z2022-12 to our March 1st meeting? Yes, Madam Chair. I make a motion to table Z2022-12 as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Committee. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board? We have a motion and a second. I'm going to call the district. Please respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote to table Z2022-12 until, until the March 1st meeting. I yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. Thank you, everybody. See you in touch. Bye. Okay, thank you. Hey, Joe. All right. Thank you. All right, we have one more on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Roberts, we'd like to introduce yeah. the next. Oh, thank you, Chairman. And you've done a great job tonight, by the way. Thank you so thank much. Z2022-13, Douglas County slash DCT Douglas Hill LLC. It's a little bit of a cleanup from an earlier rezoning. The location is 1000 Douglas Hill Road, land lot 797, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 09. Um, this is on 82 point oh four acres in district two the rezoning to eliminate um or change condition number five of the ordinance from z 2017-21 as concerning the right-of-way this has already been through the uh the uh transportation subcommittee uh chairman it's phil phil schaefer's case Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, this case uh, resolved around the construction of the million square foot Prologis uh, warehouse project. Um, a number of years ago, it was granted approval. It began grading and, and planing out the property. Uh, in the process of doing the grading plan, and I'll, I'm going to slide a zoning map over here real quick to show you uh, an aerial. So the site is is currently under construction. As they were building the site, um, it was noticed that a large retaining wall that was built on the western edge of this property to hold all of the 
dirt in place for the building itself. It's about 30 feet tall and in its length. When it was shown on the building plans, um, it wasn't caught that the top of the wall was on the property line while the bottom of the wall was actually encroaching into the right of way that was uh, already given to the county. Um, in 2017, that property, the, the proper amount of 60 feet was dedicated to the county along the westerly edge of the property to resolve to, to preserve a right of way for a road that would serve residential vehicle traffic in order to separate trucks and cars as these warehouse projects were brought online. Uh, here's a copy of the actual ordinance signed. It's number five, dedicate 60 feet of right of way corridor for future connector road uh, along an alignment shown on the DRI site plan, as you saw. That is what we see here in the left hand side is the picture I just showed you. Here you see a mock up of the site plan along which there is a retaining wall. That retaining wall, of course, was built in the wrong space. Um, DOT had the developer go along at 10 foot intervals and project a, a, a cross section of the amount of encroachment. And clearly it's encroaching several feet. If you look at it, you're gonna see that it cro encroaches into that 60 feet. So the solution was either the developer must move the wall, um, which was gonna cost quite a bit of money to do uh, since the site was just getting ready to be poured for the slab for the building. And what we decided was to have the condition amended from requiring a 60 foot dedication to requiring a 50 foot dedication. And it's been completed, we own the land. So now that the condition can be modified, it would be up to the DOT to just simply vacate 10 feet of that right of way back to the owner. And that would allow that million square foot building to continue construction since they had a, a construction hold placed on their um, project pending the um, outcome and result of our discussion um, this evening. It does meet all the zoning requirements. They still are compliant with all of the development permitting process. And we have placed uh, some findings on this one to suggest approval with the findings that it will a not re the rezoning will not modify the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. B, the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan. Categorization of this property is within the Commerce Center area, incorporating commercial and industrial uses. C, the uses permissible in the pro zoning district are generally compatible with surrounding properties and the granting D, the granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect public health, safety and welfare. I've asked for a couple of conditions. First, that the applicant shall continue to develop the property in a manner consistent with previous zoning and land disturbance permits and shall submit to the development review committee for review and, and consideration any specific site development and access management plans that would modify previously approved plans or development standards in the UDC. And second, the original condition of ordinance Z 2017-21 continue to remain in force, except that condition number five is hereby amended to provide a 50 foot dedication in lieu of the original 60 feet already dedicated and under county ownership. And I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions. We are acting on behalf of the applicant um, so it is a PNZ request on behalf of the DCT Douglas Hill LLC. So if you have any questions, you can direct them at myself or Director Valentin as to how this was going to take shape. All right, thank you. Well, in that case, is any is anyone that can speak in favor and wish to speak for the application? Please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. To make any comments that would you like to make, <clears throat> you have three minutes each for a total of 30 minutes. I'm opening the floor for in favor of public hearing. All right, hearing none. Now I'm opening the floor to opposition. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You have three minutes each, total of 30 minutes. Opposition. All right, hearing none, I'm 
going to close the public hearing. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions? Hearing none, Madam Chair, I yield the floor to you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions at this time? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Director Valentin. Yes, sir. All right, this, this, this was brought up in a transportation subcommittee. Is that accurate? That is correct. Uh, can you give the details of what came out of that and what, were the, what was the, the position of that committee, please? Yeah, essentially, uh, Phil covered uh, the situation pretty well. Uh, we discovered that there was an encroachment. There was a concern about potential future liability to the county. Uh, if the wall was allowed to remain in place and it be part of this uh, county's right of way. And so the, the decision uh, of the transportation committee, uh, the recommendation was to pursue this avenue where uh, the, the right of way that had been dedicated could be reduced by 10 feet uh, and uh, allow the, the constructed um, retaining wall to remain in place that still would preserve a 50 foot wide right of way where a road similar to what would have been done within a 60 foot right of way can be constructed. Of course, it would have to be a certain accommodations the construction may have to be a little different, but functionally uh, we can still, the county, if it so desires in the future could construct a road um, that would accomplish the same thing. So. That was the recommendation uh, from the committee that uh, we pursue this avenue. We um, have had discussions with the property um, a developer and they're agreeable to, to, doing, um, to pursuing this. And they're grateful that they certainly they don't have to uh, necessarily remove the wall. One of the things that will need to happen if, if it's the will of the planning and zoning and, and board of commissioners to modify that condition of approval for the development, uh, they would have to be separate action at a, a future date uh, by the Board of Commissioners to vacate uh, the, the 10 feet back to the developer. They have uh, committed to repairing the necessary um, deed uh, descriptions, uh, legal descriptions and the like to accomplish this. So. Uh, if, it, if it is approved by the board and the planning and zoning um, board recommends uh, approval tonight, uh, there would be one more step to accomplish this, um, but it would still preserve uh, the right of way and the ability to have a future road along that uh, right of way. Thank you for that. Just to the planning and zoning board and to the board of commissioners, this is something that Director Valentin brought to the transportation committee to give advisement on the thought, um, but I don't mean to necessarily bind either of you in this position. I appreciate Miguel holding holding the standard and what we we're trying to accomplish out there, but yet being amenable. In other words, they dedicated this to us and to make this work, let, let's give it back to let, allow them to have enough room because they have that. Now Miguel, how tall was that wall again? Uh, it, it varies in height, but uh, the it is as high as 30 feet at the highest point. Yeah, 30 foot wall. No, you got to back that up off the road. So again, this is one of those where everybody came together and sort of looked at this, what was in the best interest. Um, I gave my blessing in that committee to my peers on what that was about to move forward, but take it to the, obviously both boards to move it forward. Uh, it is a million square feet. It is something that they've been working with us and trying to work through our vision out there. Um, obviously the master plan and all those things associated with it. Um, but in the spirit of keep things moving, um, I think this was the best move to move forward. I just, Madam Chair, thank you. I had to give accounting to my peers on where this came from since it was mentioned about transportation committee. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Any other remarks, board of commissioners, or questions for the staff? Okay. If there are no further questions, I yield back to you, uh, Chairman Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, Planning and Zoning Board, can I get a motion for Z2022 13, please? The last one.
planning zone board can i get a motion for z 2022-13 this is frank payne um i make a motion to approve application z 2022-13 a request for a rezoning from light industrial with conditions to light industrial um, amend with amended conditions to amend uh, condition number five of or ordinance Z 2017-21 to dedicate 50 feet in lieu of the 60 feet originally required with the findings and conditions as presented by staff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Payne. Uh, can I get a second? Brandon Penniman, second. Thank you, Mr. Penniman. All right. So planning, uh, planning zone board, when I call your name, please respond with a yay or nay. Teresa No. Yay. Kurt Nicholson. Yay. Frank Payne. Yay. Brandon Penniman. Yay. And Vice Chair Rob Thomas, yay. Madam Chair, I'll hand it back to you with a uh, motion to carry for Z2022-13. Thank you so much, Chairman Thomas. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion? You've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion? Commissioner, sure. Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to accept the recommendation to approve Z2022-13 with the findings and recommendations as so stated. Okay, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second in the discussion. We have a motion and a second. I'm gonna call your district, please. Uh, respond accordingly, District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries to move forward with Z2020. Dash, I think that was, what was that? DC2022 dash. 13. 13. 13. There it is. We moved it so fast, and the motion carries. I yield back to you, Chairman Thomas. All right. Well, congratulations, Douglas County. <laughs> I think uh, that was the last uh, that order is of the business last today. All right. Yes. Great. All right. Any other business to be here to be heard tonight? No, sir. All right. Great. Well, at this point, I'd like to adjourn the planning and zoning board and turn it over to Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, the chairman of the BOC. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Chairman uh, Thomas. Board of Commissioners, do we have any other business to come before us tonight? No. Okay. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. If there's no more uh, additional business tonight for this body, this meeting is adjourned and have a good night. <laughs>